Welcome to the Daily Jerry Anderson podcast, where the presenter's days on this earth, in this studio and in this shirt are surely numbered. The buzzards are circling overhead and may fall soon. <clears throat> I'm not great today, you know. You what? I'm not great today. Uh, all of it. Uh, <clears throat> do you know when you became bad? When, when I came says, in here. No, when you says, I'm not great today. All morning, you were carrying on in the office all morning. I know, but I, I tired myself carrying on upstairs. And I didn't realise I'm as weak as I actually nah, am. No, no. It's when sympathy. I woke up this morning, I was okay. But then I carried on upstairs and exhausted myself. So now I'm ill. Now the time has come to be on the air. Yes. And now that Stephen is up with us and everything, what will he think of us? He'll yeah. think we're little puny things. But you be very careful with me today. Do you know why? Why? I'm on penicillin. Penicillin? Indeed. I can't believe that your doctor over the phone prescribed penicillin to you because without examining you, there's um, nothing wrong with you. I'm at death's door. I am on antibiotics. I'll tell you what. I've been very careful with myself this past couple of days. For instance, the night before last, I was in bed at 7 o'clock with a hot whiskey. You were not. You said you were walking. Your hot whiskey? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And then last night, after I got my antibiotics, I, I took a couple of them. I went to bed with a triple hot whiskey and sugar and honey. And I lay there stoned out of my head after I drank all that. You're and not I, supposed to be taking alcohol with uh, anti antibiotics. That's an old wives' tale. Like you're, it is not. Yeah, the, the doctor will tell you that if you, you if you get if you get tablets and they tell you look they, they tell you don't no alcohol. You're, these are antibiotics. Don't be taking alcohol. That's a, an old wives' tale. It's not an old wives' tale. I know the reason why people think you can't take alcohol with antibiotics, and I don't think I should tell you what it is. It stems from a particular thing that was prevalent during the war. It's an old rumour that persisted. People say, you're taking antibiotics. You better not take a drink now. You better not take a drink. They the don't work. The doctors tell work. you that. No, they don't. The no, doctors, doc- no, they don't. They no, tell they don't. you not to be taken. If you go to the chemist, they'll point it out. You to be taking alcohol. No, they don't. Do you know why that rumour has persisted? Now, I don't know how to put this in a delicate manner, but I'll do it as delicately as I can. During the war... When there were a lot of soldiers and sailors running around going... I don't think you have to go any further. Does Emma know what I mean? She nods in disgust. A lot of soldiers and sailors going around in different ports going... Right? They They would be stricken by a particular ailment. Right? Uh, Many of them would be stricken by a particular ailment and then go to the doctor. Gout. Gout. That's one of them. But for al- with alcohol, taking too much alcohol, they get gout. Was that, was that no, I, say, I didn't say alcohol. I said, mm-hmm. that's not what? alcohol. Right, are, two are, things, we, are we talking about the same thing? There's two things that soldiers and sailors do. They go, drink, and they go, mm-hmm. right. And one comes before the other. Drink is first. Women, Sean. Mm-hmm. Women, that's what I'm talking about. I, why did you make me say it? Is your father still working? I don't know. <laughs> That's not what you're talking about. Yes. Stupid. What happened was, during the war, a lot of soldiers and sailors who were called up and different ports and all, there was a lot of... Right? right? So, consequently, they were struck down with a particular ailment, which is not gout. Right? Mm. Don't ask me any more no, about this. No, okay, I don't have to. You're a man of the world. Yes, no, I, I don't no, you're have... not. You're a golfer of the world, which mm-hmm. is a different thing. So, they would go to the doctor, and the doctor said, hold on a minute, these are mad men. If I give them penicillin, which is the only thing that works... They'll just go right out and again, thereby making the whole situation worse. So the doctor said to them, listen, you better not drink during that there because it won't affect you. If you drink during that there, it's no good to you. So trying to make the soldiers and sailors not drink until such time as they're, the effects of the uh-uh went, uh-uh. you see. So they were actually lying to the soldiers and sailors, telling them not to drink because if they drank, they'd be going around looking for more, thereby making their... Even worse, and spreading it out. out. (laughs) (laughs) This show has nicely settled in now after a difficult first two decades. A pattern is emerging, a pattern which can be clearly seen from many top floor windows across Ulster. This is appreciated by the more enthusiastic listener. But first, a second opinion on the penicillin debate. There's a chance that I may be wrong, and if this chance is great, And if I am wrong, I apologise. And if, indeed, it is harmful to take drink whilst you're taking antibiotics, I apologise. All I'm saying is that I was told by a man of the profession that it doesn't make any difference. Well, here's a bit of a hole in your your argument. 
Right. Okay. Patterson wasn't invented in the Second World War. Exactly. Robert what? says. Robert no, says. Alexander Fleming invented it. When? <laughs> About half past three. <laughs> See, when? Whatever. It may not have been the last war. Well, which may war? not have been the last war. Well, what all Whatever the war tiny there was. war did you have? Now, for instance, now another thing they did during the war. Remember, they used to put lime in people's tea. That's right. They could give them lime juice. Said so no. that's good for you there. Do you know what that was for? No. To stop I... the. Are you talking oh, lime what? juice? I've never heard of people putting lime in. Well, that's tea. what they used to give them. Is that the same as what they give? Mm-hmm. Get, Soldiers when they go away to camp, <clears throat> yes, and pr- and prisoners, all that stuff. Yeah, yes, yeah, same, same thing. Same same thing. Effect. Listen, I don't know why we're bothering with this at all, actually, because uh, Stephen's uh, on one, is he? Yeah, uh, I don't know why we're bothering with this at all because uh, a, a gentleman has given me the script for the start of the show. Right, don't you read it? Yeah, Jerry. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Ja- Coyle. I was thinking about you last night as I was walking. I thought to myself, I wonder if Jerry ever had a wooden spinning top when he was a wee boy in short trousers. Jerry, that's all very interesting, Sean, but do you know that I didn't watch on TV last night EastEnders? Jerry, we really must get on, Sean, if you want to contact the show. Our email address is Coyle. I was talking to a man last night. He says he saw you once coming out of a shop. Jerry, as I was saying, our email address is Coyle. You look very thin today in that wee shirt. Emma says you look thin too. Our email address is Have you been this morning? You don't look right. Yes, I have been, Sean. Now, if you don't mind, do you know what you never see now? Men cycling home on the Saturday night with a pound of special mints and a carrier for the Sunday dinner. God give me strength if I may continue. Cooey, you're pinking a ballerina. We'll be back after the news. <laughs> That's very clever. And very accurate. That's the first half hour. <laughs> We can stretch that out for an hour and a half. I was enjoying that. <laughs> Sit there laughing. I, I like know. giving Emma laughs. I know you do. I know. Talk of penicillin leads naturally to the employment history of the presenter and his care of the sailors of the world as they made their way to the docklands of Derry Stroke, Londonderry. They talk of little else on the high seas and on the Spanish main. You should have known that. What do you mean I should have known that? There's many things that come to my attention later in life. I didn't know that. Yeah. But you, do you remember the time? You didn't know that. I didn't know that, no. But I was you never, still don't believe I, it. I was never a docker. But I was never a docker either. Why are you saying that I was a docker? I was never a docker. You were, you, you were involved with stevedores. <laughs> I was the man. I used to work for a company called yes. Ari Burke and Company, we London Dairy Limited Shipbrokers and Forwarding Agents. And I, <laughs> see, I never forgot that. Do you remember the time you took the guys over to Alton Gavin? Well, you see, this is the very thing I'm talking about. Yes. This is all connected. Yes, you see. There was well, a time how come you didn't know that then? I didn't know that then because there was no need for me to know that then. I worked as a... Well, uh, I, I don't think you should tell I, the story. I, I can. No, I, you shouldn't No, tell. I can tell it. Because There's it's, a call it's, on too. It's germane it. to the story. Yes, well, Jim's on too. It's germane. Oh, right. Uh, I worked on a, in a shipping agency, and my job was to intercept boats as they come in. And, uh, whenever, Not to intercept them. Intercept them is right. Sound like a pilot or a... Spitfire, <laughs> like a man, get a horn. And uh, anyway, my, my job was to go down on the boats and to make sure that all the paperwork was right and say anything I can do for you, Captain. Yes, I would like uh, four <laughs> dancing girls and a and a balloon, you know. And I would get them whatever they wanted, make sure they had the supplies, anything that they needed. And if any of the guys were sick, I would make sure they got treatment, you know, if any treatment uh, that was available on the boat wasn't sufficient. So I went into a boat one time. I'll never forget. It was called the Richard de la Ranaga. It was a Spanish boat. And I went in and I said, Capitan, I said, I didn't speak any foreign languages, but I used to sound as if I did. And the captain said, There we a problem here. Yes. <laughs> I said, What's the problem? Yeah, they've got many men, sick guys, men, they see. I pretend they're Italian. Yes, it's all right. I can't do a Spanish accent. No, it's good, it's good. It's good. It's many good. men, sick here. We, we, we need to take them to doctor, to hospital. I said, Really? Uh, how many? Uh, Twenty. 20. That's the 20 men. Big crew. That's not a big crew for a boat. That's, that's, that's a, a big crew. It's a big ship. This is not, what, what do you think? This is the foil ferry? Oh, wait a minute. What you brought in, would you intercept it in the foil? You were bringing in spuds and, and, no. and logs. Big ships. What? What big did you ships. bring in? Big ships. You only brought in coal and logs and, and, and spuds. No, you know nothing about Londonderry's maritime history. Well, what did you bring in? I brought in everything. What? To bring in everything. Tell me, tell me something else apart Try from what I just... tractors used to come in. You don't believe Yes, and I'll tractors. tell you something else. I'll tell you something else. I, I, here's a, a statistic that will bend your mind. 
when I was working in the docks in Derry Stoke, London, Derry, there were these big, it's all different now, there's all these warehouses, mm-hmm. and all these ships would discharge their cargo into, there'd be bicycles, there'd be washing machines, there'd be all kinds of stuff, yeah. well, would, would go yeah, by a yeah, ship, yeah, yeah. it's, it's cheaper that way. And they would arrive and all the cargo would be stored. In the, and sometimes they had to stay overnight. Lorries would come the next day and pick them up, that kind of thing. You know, distribute them all around the country. I remember talking to a man down there who was in charge of one of the companies. And I said, uh, I said, uh, is there a bit of pilferage down here at night? He said, he said, are you serious? I said, does anything kind of disappear? He said, do you know mu- how much we have to allow for cargo going missing? I said, how much? He said, a third I couldn't be a third. Could be as high as a third. I said, in other words, if thirty tractors come in, ten will disappear. No, he said, yes. No, no, no he's no. a third. Thirty-three and a third percent. I, I, mm. That's a third to me. Anyway, the man said, "We twenty people uh, take." But uh, uh, again, no, well, I don't want to leave the boat yet. That sounds. We're still awful. on the boat. Uh, but that sounds a big crew for twenty tractors. It's not a big no, but. You're talking about big boats used to come in there. The reason why they don't come in now is because they built bridges, peace bridges, that stops the ships coming in. The presenter has often been torn over what musical direction to take when his radio Ulster duties are no longer required. Does he pursue a career in a hot Mediterranean country or will he return to the days of cold dance halls in Offaly? It's a difficult choice. He may need to consult with Hugo, who is beyond recall. I was in this group one time and we, the, we were asked to go and play in, uh, in San Antonio, in Ibiza. Do you know where San Antonio is? No, north of the island? No, it's never been. Have you not? No. Well, it's horrible. Right. It's where everybody from Northern Ireland goes. Right. And it's horrible. And uh, what you did was you played in this bar seven nights a week. Yeah. Can you imagine what it was like? And I went there to check it out, and the people that were playing there, uh, the couple of guys, I won't tell you who they were, but they were just like zombies. And they were white as a sheet. And I said to them, I said, you guys are pretty white. I said, you know, you know, do you not never be out in the sun at all? I said, no, we've no time. He said, by the time you play, you start playing at 8 o'clock. By the time you finish playing, you're playing at 3 o'clock. You wouldn't be starting at 8 o'clock. And then you have to drink. You wouldn't start at 8. You see, you pick holes in everything I say. Yeah, but let's face it, you wouldn't start at yes, 8. Yes, you started at 8. You wouldn't start at you 8. Start at eight. Uh, do you started at 8. Do you remember the other thing about uh, you better start playing, boys? There's people outside in their yeah, cars. Yeah, yeah, Well, do you, th- do you think that eight. doesn't apply in Spain? See, if you don't hear music yeah. coming in, out of a bar, you don't go in. That's correct. Well, well I, I remember them. I never then, thought about that. One of the things that I always used to resent bitterly when I used to play in a show band years and years ago, what you'd do would be you'd arrive maybe on a January night mm. and you'd arrive somewhere in the middle of May, oh, in the depths of the countryside and there'd be a wee woman waiting with her coat on, you see, yeah. and she'd say, hello, boys, how are you doing? Come in now and you'll have a bite to eat. And you'd go in and you'd get a tomato salad. You see, after you've been in an icy van all day. Mm. And then the promoter would come in and he'd say, right, boys, I want you on the stage at nine o'clock. And you'd say, that's a little early. So, ah, they won't come in if they don't hear the noise. They sit outside in their cars. And then if they hear noise, and there's other people outside in their cars, they wait. And then if there's nobody there or there's no music, they drive away and go somewhere else. I said, where else would they go? Ah, there's other places to go that you know nothing about. He wants you to start at nine. So you start at nine. What about the, the uh, relief band? Well, there were none then. This is before you, this. Uh, wait, wait, you were playing before there were release no, bands? No, no, no. Once you play in certain bands, only bands of certain stature uh, can afford relief, relief bands. Was oh, yeah. right? Not just everybody. Was right? When I was playing in tiny, tiny bands, aye, aye, we were aye. basically a relief band ourselves. Aye, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I understand that. <clears throat> I understand what you're saying. Then you, so not fact, you'd the, stand the chess there. men weren't... The chess men were no, a big but there band. were, there were times. Had... No, but there were times when you'd arrive somewhere, and, yep, the, yep, and the, right. the, the 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 manager had yeah. not employed a relief band, mm-hmm, right. and he would insist that you uh, because maybe there was some mess up or whatever, yeah. and you'd have to play from nine to two, which is a horrendous thing. Mm. So you'd stand there on stage, and you can imagine with that big blustery, blowy hall that nobody's been in all week. And no heating of any kind, because they depended on the Eskimo principle. Yeah. When everybody came in and huddled together, they'd be grand. But at the start, you stand there and stay. And sometimes you keep your coat on, you know, your, real, mm-hmm. your overcoat, yeah. and you're playing. Do you know what it's like to play a guitar when your strings are freezing? Yeah. You know, the, you, you feel the thing's going up your fingers, oh, you know, as if oh, like oh, red hot. Yeah. And your feet are freezing, and the boys are in the bed, come on, boys, we better make a bit, a bit of noise now, we better make a bit of noise now. So you're going, don't lose your hucklebuck shoes, don't lose your hucklebuck shoes, and you go dancing, dancing all the way. You're going away like that, and there's nobody there. Yeah. And you do that for maybe an hour and a half, and then you see this man coming in, slowly. Hear the door open it. 
He came in, he'll sit down in the back. He's wearing a brown suit, blue shoes, he's sitting there. Then this girl comes in, he was about 40. She comes up and sits in front of the stage, and then you see all this. And the crowd don't come in until about half twelve. So you've been playing for three and a half hours by the time the crowd comes in, and you're so tired and so horribly messed up. That's, that's, what, I, that's what I'm like today. You know? What was, Why what, did what, I start playing? Uh, where, where was this leading to? I have no idea. And anyway, you, weren't, you weren't interrupted, <clears throat> by the way. So you... I know, actually, that's what happens uh. when you let me go. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Back tomorrow. <laughs>